This is BBC One Clock Watching. to Just a Minute, the comedy game show which is popular with all ages, in which I ask my guests to speak on a subject that I give them, and they try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviating from the subject. Let us now meet the four talented players who are going to partake today. And first of all, we welcome that amusing comedian, Linda Smith, and beside her, the debonair Michael Cashman, and on my left, actor and wit, Peter Jones, and beside him, from the far show, Maria McCurlane. Would you please welcome all four of them? <laughs> and they will gain points or maybe lose them as they challenge as the other ones are speaking. And we begin the show today with Linda Smith. Linda, the subject I have here is Kitchen Gadgets. Tell us something about that in this game, starting now. There are a bewildering number of kitchen gadgets available to today's cooks. Olive stoners, garlic crushers, ovens, melon ballers, useful for neutering any unruly cantaloupes, rendering them more docile and home-loving. But the most insidious kitchen gadget of all is the sandwich toaster. Oh, one thinks, we shall enjoy toasted sandwiches every day. Wrong! Once do you taste this delicious comestible, after <laughs> which time the said gadget is consigned to that gadget graveyard under the sink, the dusty cupboard, where it joins the dust buster. And Maria, you challenged. Very good. Very good. Gosh, mate, you went for 38 seconds. Blimey. I Very think good, that but a little a bit of applause, annoying. actually. Yeah. <laughs> It's a very difficult game. So, Maria, what was your challenge? Well, it was a bit of a mealy mouth challenge, but I thought she was being a bit smug, frankly, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a bit of hesitation. There was a definite hesitation. Only because she was being so good, really, that's really, why. No. So, whoever gets the correct challenge, gains a point for doing so, takes over the subject. In this case, it's Kitchen Gadgets, and you have, Maria, 22 seconds available starting now. By far and away the most useful kitchen gadget, as far as I'm concerned, is a man around the place. <laughs> Especially one who can do good cooking, if that's a proper sentence, which I'm sure it isn't. However, Breville snack toasters, as Linda was touching upon, are absolutely no use at all unless you happen to be called Neville. In which case, you have a kitchen gadget... <laughs> <laughs> Whoever is speaking, when the whistle goes, gains that extra point for doing so. On this occasion, it was Maria McCurlane, and you won't be surprised to work out that she is in the lead at the end of the round. <laughs> Michael Cashman, will you take the next round? The subject, hangovers. I'm sure you may have had a few in your time, but talk on the subject if you can, <laughs> starting now. Hangovers are considered to be the effects of consuming too much alcohol the night before. This is not so. You can have architectural hangovers. If you look at the top of a building, you will see slates sloping into the gutter, and haven't we all done that before? <laughs> you will see bricks jutting out above the pavement. These are also hangovers. But to get to the real Whoopi Goldberg party hangover. Yes, you've had so much to drink, you look like Nicholas's tie. Your, your tongue feels like the inside of a budgie's cage. The inside of your stomach... And you've challenged. Yes, yes. Repetition of inside. There were two insides there, my goodness me. And after what you said about me, you deserve to lose it. My favourite tie. Cornflowers on it. Uh, Maria, another correct challenge, another point to you, and the subject is hangovers, and you have 27 seconds starting now. I happen to know that our esteemed chairman, Mr Nicholas Parsons, is suffering from a chronic hangover from too much gin last night in the wonderful city of Birmingham and dancing with a selection of gorgeous showgirls. Oh, <laughs> how exciting. Was I really? <laughs> yes, Michael, I think we challenged. should know more about that than the hangover. De deviation. We were talking about what you were up to ra last night rather than the hangover. <laughs> Michael, you have a correct challenge. So you take over the subject, you get a point for doing so. You have... Uh, 
um, 13 seconds and it's hangovers starting now. Hangover, you wake up in the middle of the afternoon, you can't quite get the body going, the brain feels dead, you can't stretch, you can't yawn. That... <laughs> yes, um, Maria. Can't. Two can't. Three can't, Three can't actually. Can't. Yes. <laughs> yes, a tough game, isn't it? And Maria, you've got him with four seconds to go on hangovers. And another point, of course, and you start now. The best cure for a hangover is a great big fried breakfast with eggs. Right. <laughs> Maria McCurlane was again speaking as the whistle went and gained that extra point for doing so and has increased her lead at the end of the round. Peter Jones, please take the next round. And the subject, oh, a lovely one for you, I'm sure, Peter. Was it your period? The 20s. You have 60 seconds as usual, starting now. Well, jazz had really come of age in 1911, I think, and it had taken a grip of the country by the 20s. And I enjoyed those uh, discs that we used to play on the old horn gramophone, you know. And there were other things to look for. Uh, one can... I can't remember much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was a mercy challenge, wasn't it? It was, I'm afraid. Yes, yes. He was getting a bit lost in the 20s. But, Linda, you've got the 20s now with another point for a correct challenge. And you have uh, uh, 44 seconds available starting now. The 20s. I very much enjoy collectible china from that era. Clarice Cliff and Crown Devon and uh, various other kinds of china that... <laughs> yes, yes. She did hesitate. She did hesitate and she'd been trying to get all her china out but she couldn't get it out <laughs> without putting an er in. So, you've got the 20s back again, Peter, and you've got 34 seconds uh, starting now. Well, it could refer to one's own 20s, which occurred sometime after the first 20 of the uh, century. And I remember I had a lovely time. Things were really swinging by then. And uh, although I uh, caught cold several nights, I... Uh, <coughs> <laughs> I think there was a hesitation. Th there was a hesitation? Yes, yes I didn't know quite how to phrase it without doing the <laughs> Yes, there was about to be some deviation, I think, probably. Yes, 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 we were about to get into Peter Jones's <laughs> private life. Michael, correct challenge. 15 seconds available on uh, the 20s, starting now. The 20s have many associations, one of them being criminal gangsters. Al Capone immediately springs to mind with the prohibition, the killings that went on. Also, what springs to mind... And there's uh, the phrase again, yes, springs to mind. <coughs> yeah, difficult game. Four seconds for you, Maria, on the 20s, starting now. My ten... Oof. <laughs> My ten... Hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong teeth, sorry. Wrong teeth, right. What did you say, Peter? Hesitation. Oh, yes, indeed. I thought you said something else. No. I recognise the hesitation, but I thought you were interpreting as something else, because, I mean, Maria has an effect on being who sits beside you, I know that. Well, Looks, Mrs. what's the subject again? <laughs> <laughs> it sits a long time ago now. <laughs> The 20s, oh, Peter, the and the you've 20s. cleverly got in with only two seconds to go, and you start now. Before the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Jones speaking as a whistle and gained that extra point. At the end of the round, the situation is that uh, Linda Smith is trailing just behind uh, Michael Cashman, who's one point behind Peter Jones, and he's at three or four points behind our leader, who's still Maria McCurlane. And Maria, your turn to begin. Oh, a bit apt here, going to the dogs. Uh, after what we've just been saying, you thought perhaps I was on that road. But uh, would you talk on that subject? 60 seconds, Maria, starting now. I'm rather offended to be given this phrase, going to the dogs. As our charming audience can see, I'm a beautiful woman of 25. <laughs> <laughs> has many a year before that phrase will apply. It's, it's, yeah! Oh. <laughs> Michael, you got in first. It's, it's. Yes, it's, oh. it's. It's it, it's yes, it. and you didn't have her for the hesitation, but it doesn't matter. I was talking rubbish as well, frankly, wasn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yes, at least I had you, Mrs. I was thinking going to seed rather than the dogs, but there but you some are. of the best rubbish ever spoken has come out in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard me yet. Uh, Michael, come on, 47 seconds. Going to the dogs, starting now. Going to the dogs has become a commercial affair. Businesses now invite guests to go to dine and watch the dogs going around the track chasing that tiny little rabbit that runs ahead of them. Also, at the dogs, people can place... Right, yes, Maria, you came in. It's not a rabbit, it's a hare. Yeah, I told Peter to press on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nice to have friends, impartial <laughs> friends, isn't it? <laughs> 
We should never have done the Rocky Horror Show together. Oh, well, we did didn't actually do it together. We, we, we alternated, didn't we? We alternated we? stilettos yes. and... St yeah. Well, we weren't wearing the same stilettos. Oh, lots more defeat, is you? there a bit of professional rivalry going on I think here? No, there was no rivalry. It was complete cooperation. When I wasn't available, Michael did it. When he wasn't available, <laughs> I did it. So... Did you uh, get Athlete's the... foot off of his stilettos? <laughs> no, but I'll talk about the tights later. Oh, please, no. <laughs> right. right, Maria, correct challenge. It is a hare they chase and not a rabbit. And so there are 31 seconds for you to tell us something about going to the dogs starting now. Going to the dogs always seems to be about greyhounds or whippets. I wonder why they don't use spaniels, pugs, chihuahuas. I would certainly give all my salary for anyone who can spell. Uh, Peter, you challenge. Because it's all organised by the Greyhound Association. <laughs> and those <laughs> those uh, other dogs are not uh, admitted. You know, anyway, who would want to pay money to see a chihuahua? <laughs> uh, ch chasing a hare four times its own size. <laughs> I mean, it would be ridiculous. <clears throat> and your challenge was? <laughs> uh, deviation. Deviation, <laughs> yes. Peter, but we love the preamble up to the challenge, which uh, well, means you. you. <laughs> <laughs> now, you tell us something about going to the dogs. 21 seconds available, starting now. I used to take my mother to the dogs at the White City because she was addicted to horse racing. But because uh, it was too far to go, what's the matter? Uh, she, um... Yes, Maria, you uh, Well, it can't be my flies, really. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, it's all challenged. consumed well... by this um, dodgem car or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, he had it's me on deviation and then immediately went to horse racing. I know, we that is deviation. Dogs. Only because it was a substitute. Dog racing was a substitute for horse racing. But you didn't establish that, Peter. You said, I took my wife, my, my mother, to the dogs because she loved horse racing. Yes, and but couldn't go because it was too far yeah. away. That's quite a part of a sentence, you know. You I take trying, my challenge back. Okay. You were trying <laughs> to get away from her addiction. <laughs> yes. So, all Fair right, point. all right, we'll give you... The audience is in sympathy with you, Peter. You get the benefit of the doubt, so you get a point for being interrupted, and uh, you keep the subject of going to the dogs, and there are eight seconds available starting now. And she didn't bet very heavily, because I didn't give her much money. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, did put a little. Maria, are you challenged? Repetition of she. She didn't bet very heavily, really. Uh... Oh, that's a tough challenge. I was, it? but I knew there were only two seconds left, and I want to alienate myself in front Thanks, of you. <laughs> There's only one second left. Oh. So you cleverly and naughtily got in with one second to go on going to the dogs, Maria, starting now. I will never... Mm. Sorry. So Maria McCullin <laughs> has already uh -oh. uh, alienated herself from this audience. <laughs> and she got in with one second to go before the whistle, getting an extra point for doing so, and is in a strong lead just ahead of Peter Jones. And Linda Smith, your turn to begin. The subject, advertising. Tell us something about that subject in this game, starting now. Well, advertising is etched into my consciousness. I can remember advertising slogans from years ago. Tell them about the honey mummy. Let Nike just do it. Uh, uh, Peter, you That was a trace of hesitation. No, it was a definite hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> it was a trace. I couldn't give it against her. Ah, I see. It was a definite one. It's no, it was definite. Definite. It stood out a mile. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just move on? <laughs> move no, on, I, yes. I, I, I love the fun we have. It's salt it, it, in the wound. You love it, don't you? Uh, yes, he does. No, not salt in the wound. All right, wound. I think we've established yes. it was hesitation. Oh, right? Yes. Yes. Can we move forward yeah. now? All oh, right, Linda. Now, don't that's the sensitive. second time she's asked you to move forward. <laughs> and that's a repetition. <laughs> right, advertising's with you, Peter, and there are 50 seconds available starting now. I think there's rather too much of it for my taste. Uh, though I don't appear in many of them on television, I do voiceovers, you know, occasionally, and I'm available if anybody here <laughs> would, uh, invite me to join them again. But uh, on the whole, there's an excess of it because uh, they have to keep their name in front of the public, not to. Uh... Maria, you challenge. A definite that, error, yes, yes. That was an error. Yeah, it was. Yes, yes. definitely, yes. 28 seconds, Maria. Advertising with you, starting now. Go to work on an egg, I believe, was one of Faye Weldon's marvellous slogans. Uh, no Ooh! Linda, hesitation. another hesitation. So you've got the subject of advertising back. 22 seconds starting now. Naughty but nice. That was one of Salman Rushdie's <laughs> earliest creations. What a silly slogan for cream cakes. How can a little confection be either good... What did you... Was that a... I thought of... it was a hesitation, but it was a pause for breath. 
No, <laughs> no. I think it was an yes. anticipation um, that she was going to repeat something, and she didn't quite, Michael. I will never inhibit keenness, but I wouldn't give it to you on this occasion. So, you've still got the subject, Linda. Advertising, 12 seconds available starting now. How splendid. Another 12 seconds on this lovely subject. And, and uh, Maria? I think there was a lovely from before, lovely confection. Looked about lovely mm. confection before. Well, listen, Maria, yes. There are seven seconds for you on advertising, Maria, starting now. I'm a lovely... And you... Yes. Hesitation. Hesitation. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> They're gunning for me now. Yes, they are. Well, you, you did take two seconds to get your breath. To have together. a breath? I'm an actress. <laughs> I have just to fill minute, my diaphragm. Whether you're an actress or not, you need to get your breath before... I always give that pause before now. You always got to get your breath in just oh, before... Oh, during that... Yes. Oh, I'm right. so glad yes. you told me that. Uh, so, <laughs> Linda, you got in with five seconds, back with you. Oh, you didn't get in, you've still got the subject. Another point, of course. Five seconds advertising starting now. If you're sitting all alone, make new friends on the telephone. That's a very catchy bit of... <laughs> Whoever is speaking when the whistle went gains that extra point, as I've said before, and it was Linda Smith, who has leapt forward. But she's still one behind Peter Jones and a few behind our leader, Maria McCurlane. Michael Cashman, your turn to begin. Amateur dramatics. Tell us something about that subject in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean we've got some amateur dramatic players in the audience or they can't stand them? <laughs> anyway, they're keen. Tell them all about it, Michael. 60 seconds, starting now. Amateur dramatics are often associated solely with village halls. But today, amateur dramatic societies are one of the burgeoning industries of our nation. In fact, it's particularly British. Yes, Maria. Well, it's a slight deviation because it's amateur dramatics means that it's a part-time process, and he said industries, meaning it's work. It's industry meaning hard work. Not necessarily, oh, but... Oh, no, no, I think you were referring to... I think it's a, it's a clever and rather subtle challenge, and I have to be very <laughs> difficult, but I think, actually, I must give the benefit of the doubt to, to Maria on this one. Yes. Oh! Ooh. Yes. I was perfectly... <laughs> I know this audience doesn't want me to, but I try to be fair within the rules of just a minute. And really winning if... them over, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> and if I feel oh, to I have uh, given the benefit of the doubt to one player at one moment, I always try and redress it at some other moment later on. Maria, you tell us... You seem some... shifty. Yes. <laughs> Who, me? Yes, if you go from one to the other and try to uh, benefit one person because you've been very unjust to somebody else. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Have you got a hangover from last night, Peter? No, I haven't, unfortunately, no. no. You couldn't find your wallet if you had <laughs> Michael Cashman, I thought you were my friend. Why do you clap these? Because I've been on tour with you, it's absolutely true. <laughs> OK. Uh, Maria, um, I don't know what the challenge was, but I think it was a correct one, wasn't it? Uh, yes, a deviation, I grant it. 47, no, 48 seconds available on amateur dramatics starting now. Amateur dramatics can prove to be a marvellous source of amusement, especially if you're watching small children. Normally bad things happen, like their pants falling down or forgetting the words, and Mummy and Daddy always seem to be in the audience remembering to tell them, help me somebody because I'm talking rubbish. <laughs> Michael Cashman's helped you. Thank Hesitation. you, Michael. There we are. So, Michael, you got the subject back and you got a point for doing so. If you're going, going all this time, you wouldn't have got any more points, would you? Absolutely not. So, 32 seconds. Tell us something more about amateur dramatics starting now. Amateur dramatics exist within every single strata of society. If you walk along the street, you will see two lovers. Uh, Peter. No, they don't exist among the professional classes who <laughs> act for a living. <laughs> Obviously, they can't. <laughs> no. So, that is a very shrewd... Uh, interpretation of deviation. Yes. And you have a correct challenge. And you have 24 seconds. Amateur Dramatics, Peter, starting now. Well, I used to uh, take part in Amateur Dramatics a lot when I was very young, and it taught me a great deal. Uh, and it, for one thing, uh, how to persevere and try and perfect the role that one was playing uh, in preparation for when one would get paid for it, which took a rather long time. I admit, and when I did get paid, it wasn't very much. No, oh, no, oh. no, there was a challenge before the whistle, Maria. No, I'm sorry, no, I'm not. Maria. I'm sorry, I leant forward in fascination and then accidentally <laughs> touched my bell. Because you spotted his repetition of paid, didn't no, you? No, I didn't. Oh, you did? I didn't. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, you're trying to win the audience back on your side, are you? So you want Peter to have the point yes. for speaking when, he sh when the whistle should have gone. That's All right. Well, so, mm, so Peter, she's given you that point for speaking when the whistle went. I don't accept charity. <laughs> I'd accept anything that's going at this game, Peter. <laughs> All right, well, I will, yes. And I'll accept it's anything. You, I will. Yes, yes. yes. And I, it's not lovely to accept things from Maria anyway. Yes, it is, yes. That's right, yes. So Peter Jones got a point for speaking when the whistle went, and he has moved forward, and he's only just behind Maria McCurlin, who's still in the lead, and uh, uh, who's... Peter, it's your turn to begin. No. Oh. Pillow talk. <laughs> <laughs> 60 seconds starting now. Well, it's something one does with one's partner uh, before switching off the light. And it can be a resume of what's occurred during the day, or it can be a discussion of plans for the morrow. In our case, my wife and I, we usually are talking about our uh, schemes for... Uh, uh, Linda. Touch yes, all right. Hesitation. Say it, hesitation. <laughs> yes. It was correct, yes. So tell us something about pillow talk, uh, Linda, in 40 seconds, starting now. As a relationship progresses, the quality of pillow talk declines. At the beginning of the affair, it's all lovey-dovey and romantic. Towards the end of it, it's more the sort of thing like, uh, did you put the rubbish out? Or is that a noise downstairs? Go and look. No, you look. No, you. No, you. No, you. Uh, <laughs> yes, Michael. Repetition of the word look. Yes, there was a lot of that. Right. 21 seconds for you, Michael, on pillow talk starting now. Pillow talk exists between people who are very close to one another because it's at that moment just before you're about to drift off to sleep that you feel most vulnerable and therefore you admit to that loved one your confessions of the day your fears about the future yes maria repetition of your your yes and you were looking directly at maria then i have me, to to stop her challenging me <laughs> It's not working. Well, no, he's trying to hypnotise me, I, I think, know with was, such intensity. I know he was, trying to hypnotise you in it, but you picked it up and uh, got a correct challenge of repetition. And there are four seconds for you, Maria, on Pillow Talk starting now. I normally get duvet talk, which involves blowing off and... <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you challenged half a second before the whistle went. What yes. was your challenge? Well, it was a deviation because she's talking about not pillow talk, but duvet talk. <laughs> and that is a very different mm. thing. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. yes. I think Excuse you won a lot of me. friends and a lot of sympathy over here, Peter, really? so they want you to have it. Oh, well, I wish they would. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would. No, no, I don't want to have it, Peter. I just want you to, to have that point. And yes. you have half a second on Pillow Talk starting now. It's not... Oh, Maria's challenge again. <laughs> yes, Maria. Just because I'm furious, that's why. <laughs> Peter's got it well, back. You, you know, you've interrupted him. So, Peter got another point for that. You were interrupted. Am I in the lead? <laughs> so, so you've got a quarter of a second on Pillow Talk starting now. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, speaking as a whistle went game, the next point for doing so, and he has leapt forward. He's now equal with Maria McCollin. It's a difficult name to say quickly. Maria McCollin in the lead, and whose turn? It's Maria's turn to begin. Maria, hormones. Tell us something. <laughs> about... <laughs> I don't know why they're laughing. Maybe it's. Uh... Maybe it's the sort of, uh, the sort of uh, waves that you give off coming from your hormones. But there are 60 seconds as usual, starting now. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who used to be a former model, and she said it's apparently very bad to be... Uh, who's challenged? Uh, Linda? Just a bit confused. Used to be a former model. Oh, yes, that was bad grammar, wasn't it? Yes. It's nonsense, Maria. It's nonsense, frankly. yeah. <laughs> but it was going to be quite interesting. Well, carry on, then. No. no. <laughs> Yes. I'd rather have heard it than heard the challenge, to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I must say, you know, to be, speak colloquial as we do in this show, but to be challenged on... But I must be fair within the rules of just yeah. a minute, Linda. You have a correct challenge. It was ungrammatical. Well, I'm not so... bothered. It's only a game. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's fun, isn't it? And that's what we try and generate. So, Linda, you have 55 seconds on hormones starting now. Well, I wish I hadn't challenged because I have absolutely nothing to say on the subject. Right, Peter. Better be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> S 
so, so Don't you, you think, think? Nothing to say. She said, I've nothing to say. I know, but she still has to She's keep throwing going. in the towel. <laughs> Peter, what I do there is, because we enjoyed the interruption, but not the challenge, oh. we give you a bonus point for that. But as Linda was interrupted, she gets a point, uh, and she continues with the subject. 50 seconds available. Hormones, Linda, starting now. The subject of hormones, except that they are a very important part of our bodies. They rage through our veins, causing us to fall in love, be in a bad mood, be happy, be sad, be depressed. And oh. uh, Maria. A lot of bees. A lot of bees. You were being far too frequently. So, Maria, you've got hormones back with you now. 37 seconds starting now. Previous mannequin, who told me it was very bad to be photographed with a tiger when you were ovulating. Because if the tiger didn't kill you, <laughs> tiger! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Repetition of tiger. Yes, there were too many tigers. Yes. Well, I would have rather heard the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, the idea of tigers making you ovulate is really quite bizarre. But, but Peter, it was a correct challenge, so I have to, within the rules of just a minute, give it to you 28 seconds. <laughs> Hormones starting now. They're very lively things, particularly when stimulated by chemicals and things that the doctors will give you. And if you're a weightlifter, I think they make quite a difference. Or is that st steroids? I can't remember. <laughs> yes, uh, Melinda. Touch of uh, grinding to a halt. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, yes. it is steroids, actually. It, it is, is, yes, yes. But hormones is a subject. It's with you, Linda, and there are 15 seconds available starting now. Chaps who have too much testosterone coursing through their bodies tend to be a bit tedious. They often have very overdeveloped bodies and tiny little pinheads. Uh, Maria, you... <laughs> <laughs> Saving her career, when she was just about to say... <laughs> Um, <laughs> tiny little something, I think she was... No, um, bodies, repetition of bodies. There was a repetition of bodies. So, Maria McCullin has... Can't say penises on television. <laughs> oh, what a good job I didn't say penis yes. then, Maria. <laughs> And we're not even past the watershed of doing. <laughs> well, I think we are, actually. Uh, Maria, <laughs> you had a thing. correct challenge. You have uh, seven seconds on hormones, and you start now. Giving birth to a litter of cubs from a beast of the jungle can prove to be very, very expensive. <laughs> very, very. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Linda, Linda got in first there. Yes. What was your challenge, Linda? Well, uh, she stopped before the end. Mm. They started laughing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I assume that's some sort of deviation. No, that wasn't deviation. You could have had her for very, very, but you didn't spot it. Oh, and very, very as well. But I didn't even want to mention very, very. I didn't want to rub it in. So, I actually, what do I do now? Because I don't agree with that first challenge. I did spot very, very, but I thought that grinding to a halt made very, very, you know, it void. more important, More it? important. Yeah. More important than not speaking seemed to me... I've All right, never Nicholas, known anybody work so hard to get a point. All right, Linda, we give you a point. You've got half a second on hormones starting now. Hormones, I'm... Speaking as a whistle wind, gained an extra point for doing so, and we have no more time to play. Just a minute. Let me give you the final situation. Michael Cashman came in a, a very strong fourth place, and in a very good third place was Linda Smith. But we have two people out in the lead at the end, and so today we say our winners are Maria McCullane and Peter Jones. Jointly. <laughs> uh, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute. And it remains me to say thank you and goodbye from our talented players of the game, Linda Smith, Michael Cashman, Peter Jones, Maria McCurlane, from me, Nicholas Parsons. Tune in next time we play this delightful game. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>